Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial we are going to be making a photo prop and then I will show you how I photograph my tumblers, edit my photos, as well as add on the watermark before posting on social media. We are starting out with two foam poster boards from Hobby Lobby. These were $5 a piece, which is double what they are at Walmart, but I feel that they are a lot more sturdy and we definitely need that so that we can have longer use out of them. We're taking some packaging tape and I am lining both of these boards up together and I'm gonna take my packaging tape and go straight down that seam. You only want to go down one side because we are going to be folding this board. So don't wrap your tape all the way around. Once you finish the front side where our pattern is going to go, then we're going to flip this over, fold it in half, and then we will place the tape along the back seam. This is going to create a hinge. You want the board to be able to close. So if you were to wrap the tape all the way around, you're pretty much just putting it in that one position. So it'll always stay open. If you put the tape on one side, close it, and then fold it over the back side, it's going to create a hinge so that you can protect that top layer on the foam boards and keep it from peeling off so quickly and give you more use out of this board. Once we have finished that hinge, I'm going to grab the wallpaper that I found on Amazon. I have used lots of different kinds of this stuff and really it's not cheap at all. <laughs> They're pretty expensive to get rolls of this, but it does last a long time. But this one in particular was super inexpensive and it has got to be my favorite I have ever used. It is a matte finish and it actually has texture to it. So it does look more realistic than any other thing that I have used in the past. Now on my last board, I did use two different patterns, one for the floor and one for the back. It was super complicated to get those cut perfectly and the hinge down the center has really worn where the rest of the board is still in good shape. So for this time, I want to use one continuous sheet, especially for if I have larger projects, I can open this board completely and I have a larger photograph surface. So I just trimmed off a piece long enough to go across the bottom and the top portion. I trimmed off a little bit of that backing and we're going to use the hinge method to apply this to our boards. I lined the edge of my wallpaper up with the edge of the board so it makes it really easy to get it nice and straight. And as I am pressing it down, I'm just removing that backing and working my way up towards the top. Once I finished that, I trimmed off the excess that was hanging over the two edges, and then we just moved on over to finish the other side.
This side was a little different since it is a smaller section, but this stuff lined up so perfect you cannot even see where the seam is. So I trimmed off the length that I needed and then took off that excess that would have been hanging over the side just to help allow me to press it down a lot easier. And then I lined up the edge of my wallpaper with the edge of what I had already pressed down and then did the same thing, just pressed it down as I removed the back and trimmed off the excess. And there you have it. You have your hinge photo prop that seriously looks amazing for 20 bucks. Now for all of my pictures, I use this little mini rug I also got from Amazon. You can go to Hobby Lobby and get a small piece of the furry fabric cut or you can order this from Amazon. It was pretty inexpensive as well. And then I just grabbed some sort of neutral florals that I can use for the background. I have my ring light set up and normally I will take my ring light and extend it so that I can pull the light itself down over top of my cup. I put my phone on portrait mode and take my photographs. Now, if you don't have a ring light or you don't have an iPhone that has portrait mode, do not worry, we have alternatives, I will get there. So once I take my pictures, I go in to edit them, just the iPhone standard edit. I go to the portrait options and change that to studio lighting. And then I go over to the standard settings. I click that auto button and then I adjust the brightness, the black point and the warmth. Now, if you don't have an iPhone or a phone that has a portrait mode, then you can use a little tool to help distance your cup or bring it up from the background and give that similar effect. The stand is from Imagination 3D Printing and I will link their shop down below for y'all. You just take your pictures the same way as I did before and of course edit them the same without using that portrait option. Now, if you don't have a ring light, my favorite place regardless to take photos is outside under a shady tree or in the shade. 
I do not like warm light at all. In my house, I have the natural light bulbs that are super bright because I like that really bright natural white light and you can get that outside. Even when it is raining, if you have a covered porch, you can still get a better photograph outside and then just adjust the brightness after you take your photos. One of the most important things that you can do before you post pictures of your products on social media is adding a watermark. To do that, we are using the GoDaddy Studio. It used to be the Over app. Many think you have to have a logo to do this, but you do not. All you have to do is add on your business name. So I have imported my photo and then I'm going to type in my Instagram handle for many reasons. You don't want someone else to save your photo without your information on it and put theirs on it and use it as their own. Also, I have saved pictures of other tumblers in the past and I would love if they all had their logos on them. So if I recreate or if I use it for inspiration, I can give them a shout out and give them credit for the original design. So once I have my Instagram handle typed out, I chose a font that I would like to use and then went over to the opacity and took that down to about 50%. I probably should have used a regular font instead of cursive, but it's fine. But you want it to be visible. You just do not want it to overtake your product photo. So make sure you do lighten that up just a bit so that it doesn't stand out more than your actual product does. And that pretty much wraps this up. If y'all have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comments. All of the products I use will be listed down in the description below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell in the corner to be notified anytime a new tutorial drops. Thank you all so much and we'll see you next time.